Yeah, let's talk about trapezoids. Trapezoids are four-sided figures that have exactly one pair of parallel sides. And that means that they can look like this. They can have you know, one side, like the top and the bottom here, that are parallel, and then the other two sides aren't even close and don't have much resemblance to each other at all. Um, they can look like this, where they have the top and bottom sides parallel, and then the other two sides are basically the same line, but mirror images of each other. So if these are the same length here and here, and then these two up here are parallel, which means, of course, that they meet at a 90 degree angle here. Um, if the two sides, the two non-parallel sides, are congruent, other than, of course, their orientation is not technically congruent, but the same length, then this is an isosceles trapezoid. I never spell isosceles, I-S-O-S-C. There we go, an isosceles trapezoid. Um, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, there are a number of other things about it that are kind of important to know. Um, if it's not an isosceles trapezoid, all that really matters is that the top and the bottom are uh, parallel to each other. Let's make it a little bit bigger isosceles one here so we can see what we're doing a little more easily. Here we go. So my diagonal lines are only kind of straight because you know, I did straight line tool for those. There we go. We'll call these the same. Now that means if this is an isosceles trapezoid, then these angles down here, the base angles, will be congruent. There we go. Um, it also means that the mid segments of both of these lines. If we were to connect the mid segments of the two sides, then we have another line that is parallel to the top and the bottom, and its length will be the average, the average of the lengths of the top and the bottom of the, of the figure. So in other words, if we call this side A and this side B, then the mid-segment length would be A plus B divided by 2. And that actually works for any trapezoid, uh, but it's certainly much more apparent, I think, when you're working on isosceles trapezoid, because basically what we're doing is taking this distance here and here, on both sides, and then we're splitting it so that we're taking part of it and adding it up here to effectively make the top and the bottom of the trapezoid equal, like a rectangle. Um, if you don't know that a trapezoid is isosceles and you're trying to prove that it is, um, you can either measure these angles down here. If the base angles are congruent, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. Um, you can also you could measure the lengths of these lines here. If we call this side here C and this side D, if C and D are identical in length and these two sides are parallel, this is either a parallelogram, which means that C and D are actually parallel to each other, or it's an isosceles trapezoid. And that's about it. Let's see how these rules apply to the example questions.